Hello everyone. Today our learning targets are I can find the gist of an informative text, what's it about, and I can find specific details in images that highlight a challenge to having clean water for everyone. We're going to start today's work with a quote about water. This is on page 54 in your workbook if you'd like to follow along. It is easy to take something for granted when it is always there. In places rich with clean water resources, there are watered lawns, clean cars, and long showers. So when I think about the words, take something for granted, that really means that it doesn't seem very special to you. You take it for granted. You don't appreciate it as much as maybe you should because you've always had it. So often people who have clean water sources like us, we take our water for granted. We don't think twice about taking a 15 minute shower or washing our cars once every two weeks or watering our lawns. But in some places around the world, that is a luxury. They do not get to do those things. So we're going to keep reading. Comprehending, which is a fancy word for understanding, the global need for water is difficult. And that means understanding that all around the world there's a need for water. That's hard for us to understand because the tap turns, the water comes out. It is unimaginable to even think of walking great distances every day to throw a bucket into a swamp and call what comes out drinking water. And you've seen in some of the pictures I've shown you, and I'll show you some today, of people in other places around the world who do exactly that. But we don't ever think about that because that's not how our life is. We want to glass the water we just go to the fridge and out it comes or go to the faucet turn it on and we have as much water as we need so for our minds to be able to imagine it is very difficult more than a billion people in the world are currently in need of clean drinking water so I'm wondering what does this make you wonder what does this quote make you think about for me I often think, how can I help? Wow, that's a lot of people that don't have clean drinking water. And I know when you don't have clean drinking water, that leads to illness. And so I feel like, how can we help? What can we do from here to help people around the world? That's what I wonder. All right, we're gonna read some more about water issues. And as I'm reading from One Well, so you can get your One Well book and read along, I'm going to read page 26. As I'm reading, I want you to think, what is this text about? What is the gist? And what are the challenges people face related to clean water? Okay, so this one is titled, Saving the Water in the Well. Water has the power to change everything. A single splash can sprout a seed, quench a thirst, provide a habitat, generate energy and sustain life. So we have some new vocabulary here. Quench. The word quench means that when you quench a thirst, you satisfy that. You no longer are thirsty because you've quenched it. Habitat you should be familiar with because that's some the um, where somebody lives, where an animal lives, it's habitat. And to generate energy, to make it and sustain life, keep life going. All right, here we go. It also has the power to unite or divide the world, either come together or separate the world. Water is the most basic and important need of all life on Earth. But Earth's one well is in trouble. There is simply not enough clean water to go around. Taking actions to conserve water or save water, conserve is another word for save, can help save the well. Conserving water means protecting both the quantity or the amount and quality of water on earth. For example, 
Using less water helps prevent water sources from drying up. And reducing water pollution protects the overall health of the well. Water conservation can help ensure there's enough clean water for everyone on the planet. By becoming more aware of how you use water and by using less, you too can protect the water in Earth's one well. Remember, every drop counts. And here's the picture to go with that. You have this in your book as well. So now I want you to answer on your Google form, what is the gist of this text? And what are the challenges people face related to clean water? It also made me think of ways that I can help, which is what I was wondering after reading the quote. Okay, so our second learning target was about using details and images that highlight a challenge to having clean water for everyone. We're going to use those details to help us see the challenge. A lot of the challenges we've talked about are uh, pollution, we've talked about access to water, and the demand in water. In the pictures that I'm going to show you, you're not going to see demand, but you'll see access and pollution for sure. So let's look at this one. This is a picture of some donkeys carrying containers for water. So you can just imagine that somewhere in the world, in another country, people are traveling to get their water. So it could be in a swampy area or in a river, but just from the looks of it, it could be clean water or it could be polluted. But this definitely shows that there is an issue with access to water. The reason I say that is the details in the text are the fact that they have to use donkeys to go get water. I don't need a donkey to get my water. So that's a detail to show with the containers on their backs and on the sides of the animal. That's how they're carrying their water. So that's definitely an issue of access. Let's look at another image. Now this image is of a woman, you can see, and this with also containers, no donkey in this one, but there she is at a river collecting her water. Now, thinking about that river, it doesn't look like that water's been filtered. So not only does she have issues with access to water, but you also see that could be an issue of pollution because that water has not been filtered. So the details are that the river, the fact that she's going to get her clean drinking water from a river, which we know is not filtered, and then the containers that she's carrying this water and having to walk to get them shows the issue of access. Here we're going to look at just a couple more. It's another one kind of similar. She's got a bucket going down to the water. Here you can see it a little better. So again, access and pollution because here's the bucket she's got to carry it here's the river you see the dirt no filters we haven't seen anything with demand because to see demand we'd have to see a higher population growth we need to see buildings being built to show the demand for water but these pictures are really focusing on access and pollution. So looking at this last picture, it's very dry climate. You don't see any rivers or lakes. There's no, no water nearby. So this is again the issue of access. Don't see the pollution as much but maybe it's there in the air. So again thinking back to our learning targets, you have to look for the details to help you understand. The fact that we don't see a lake or river is a detail. I see a lot of dirt and dryness. It's sand and therefore I know that it is going to be an access issue. Well, I hope that helped with identifying details to see what the water challenges are 
And good luck finding the gist of the text. Please reread one well, page 26, if needed.